So this is officially my first podcast. So I wanted to do it with someone very special. So I want to introduce you to Muhammad Al Jabri. He is an actual Emirati. That means from the United Arab Emirates. So I thought let's. It's a very serious topic: cycles of the buy real estate, right? So let's hear it from the horse's mouth. A small introduction. So he has been running. He was into business consultancy. Means opening up businesses. He's opened up over maybe hundreds of licenses, uh, set up businesses for multiple investors uh, for over twelve years, and recently he got into the real estate uh, sector. So he's the owner and managing partner of United Hills Real Estate. Now, uh, apart from this, personally about uh, Muhammad Al Jabri, I I call him as a friend. I call him Hamoudi. <laughs> no. You can just no. say Muhammad. You don't have to go. Into okay, no, 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 no more details. Okay, Muhammad. Now Muhammad. One very special thing about him is that, and this is something everyone should know about Emiratis. He speaks multiple languages. Of course, he's traveled across the world, right? He speaks multiple languages. So he speaks my local. That like he would speak Hindi, Malayalam, Tamil. Now we were just speaking to somebody from Sri Lanka. He was speaking Sri Lankan. So it's unbelievable. I don't know how many languages he knows, but let's get into basic. Th- Basic, not, <laughs> not too much. So we'll straight jump into <clears throat> the questions. But before I get into the cycles of real estate, why did you uh, get into real estate? Well, we've had this business consultancy and setup for about twelve years now, mm-hmm. almost. I think. Uh, no, we're going on thirteen now. So a majority of our clients. I mean, since we've opened up like about maybe three to four hundred licenses, almost. Right. Set up their businesses from A to Z, foreign investors, people in the UAE itself. We got into. I mean, it just started with our own clientele. Mm-hmm. We just, uh, if they had any inquiry when it came to real estate, we then facilitate. You know, just Understood. help them. You know, get them whatever they needed. Over time, it came to a point where, like, I noticed there's a bit of a niche, where you can say that there's not much consultants. True, but Absolutely. more. Brokers. Why I'm saying this is in the sense like I've noticed a lot of brokers. A lot of these brokers in this day and age are all new. Oh, that's true. They don't know Dubai. Yes. Inside out, like how we Absolutely. know it. Yeah. So for to them, it's just about no disrespect to them, but it's all about you know mm, good deal selling it as quickly as possible. Absolutely. However, for us, it's more of explaining when it comes to what exactly our client wants. Understood. So. As I noticed that there was this niche that okay, fine. There's not many consultants when it comes to it. I mean, mm-hmm. they are. I'm not saying no, mm-hmm. but uh, we decided to open up our own firm. In case um, I want help with even the tax situation, you know, how to minimize. Like, let's say I have a client from the Europe, and uh, he wants to figure out how to pay minimal taxes. You can help in that aspect as well. I mean, we have we have uh, registered. Tax auditing firms. Oh, excellent! Okay, that we work with. Okay, and uh, I mean, the only thing we can do is just refer them to them. I mean, okay. we don't have any expertise in our in, uh, our, in our firm for for when it comes to trying to minimize as much as we can on understood. tax. So, there are other firms. Okay, we we'll refer you to them. Uh, see, now this is what I love about some people that I work with. Honesty. That's all. See, even the investor, he doesn't expect me to be like a hundred percent all around, know everything. But at least be honest about it and guide us to the right source. Either we know it or we don't know it, and it's Very fine. Simple. So today's topic is about cycles of Dubai real estate. So uh, We've had many cycles to be honest. <laughs> good ones, all good. So um, because a lot of people are like, okay, see, there was two thousand four, two thousand nine, two thousand thirteen, two thousand sixteen. Now it's twenty twenty. Will there be another sort of downward? So this is the major concern. We'll get into that, but before one last question before we get into the cycles. Before two thousand two and two thousand four, what was it like? Like life from an Emirati's point of view, you know? Uh, well, it was uh, a lot cheaper. That's one. <laughs> uh, it was a lot easier as well. Okay. Things were very simple. Dubai was very small. Okay. It wasn't like how it is now. Okay. I mean. It was uh, I wouldn't say small in the sense like there were just a few areas compared to now you have like it's like gone up by a thousand times. Correct. So obviously it's a lot bigger, and it's about to get even bigger. Mm-hmm. 
it's not going to get smaller or stay the same. Of no course, way. of course, of course. Um, it was just the beginning. You can say where Burj Khalifa is right now, downtown it is. You could say that Dubai went till maximum, I would say, let's say, for example, Medina Jumeirah. Mm-hmm. That was where Dubai would go until. Like people would go there and whatever. And you had people living in Barsha, normal Emiratis living in Barsha, Emiratis living here. And whenever people wanted to go to a resort, they'd go to Mina Siyahi, for example. Oh, Mina Siyahi, yes, at I that remember. Time, yeah, you know? yeah, I remember that. I mean, yeah. people would yeah. go there yeah. if they wanted to go for a resort. Yeah. And now if somebody wants to go to a resort, they have to go to somewhere either. Oh, so many resorts. I mean, so many. Now but they're all a bit, like you can see that everything is spread out. Now. Yes, yes, you know? yes. So I'm only predicting that over time it's going to even continue going. So there's this concept, you know, all Emiratis are like these super rich billionaires, you know, like like that's it. You're born and that's it. You're born in Bugattis and, you know, golden palaces. And I mean, we have super rich medium in every nationality, no, in every but, culture. But because I want to show the hard working because i know how hard working emira how knowledgeable they are because i used to do this trick so i was into corporate relocation a little bit for some time right so we had contracts like with microsoft and raytheon and all that so uh, there was this driving driver's license let's say there's a client from us you just pay a certain amount and you can change your driver's license so Correct. the rta i had a very good friend again emirati right so every time uh, a client used to come, the first interaction, Emirati is scared, right? They have this fear, right? And then he's he used to be like, he used to speak to me in Arabic something. Not that I understood Arabic fully, but you know, he used to just pay the, yeah. all, and then, and then the, the guy used to get scared. And I used to be like, oh, did you meet with an accident or something in your country? He's like, no, 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 no. And then in the end, we just broke out in laughter. And we were just joking. I just want to introduce it's your first interaction with an Emirati. And then they started talking and they were so smart. And the Microsoft people are like, oh, I didn't know Emiratis are so educated, so hardworking. And it's it's amazing, you I know. I mean, we have to thank the visionary leadership here. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, they did reiterate many times yes. that, you know, I mean, they put a lot of focus into the educational system here. Okay. My family believes as well in private education as well. Okay. I mean, not a lot of people went to private, had private education in the back uh, back in the days. Some okay. people did, some people didn't. But okay. now, mashallah, it has gone more into private education. Some of the know? most educated people that I've met were actually Emiratis doctors. Uh, and they're always, and mostly they study from London. True. Most of them from London. Correct. And uh, so, but these are things that people don't know, you know, it's, it's amazing. Okay. So we got that part. Now, 2002 to 2004, uh, how was it for you? Like uh, that entire, that initial, that, you know, the offices were full, people were like coming in, there was money everywhere. So how was it for you? Mind you, I was still in school at that time, but (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it was different. I was still in school. Okay. I mean, I graduated in 2005. Okay. at that time, it was, I was, I was there at that, I was still a teenager at that time, okay. I remember, and things were very, very hot. Okay. You know, Imar just came out with uh, their launches, mm-hmm. and Nakhil at the same time came out with their launches. Right. I do remember the prices until now. What are the prices? Uh, for what example? Like, okay. what? Imar- Palm, Palm Jumeirah? No, no, I would say Palm Jumeirah, okay. for example. Palm Jumeirah, I do remember the... Signature Villas was about, I think, 2.8, I believe. That's it? Yeah, 2.8 2. 2. 8 million. million. I remember, yeah. It was around that. I remember my dad was offered uh, in Emirates Hills, Meadows, a villa for 400,000. <laughs> yes, that was in, uh, that was not Meadows. I believe that was Springs. I no, think. Meadows, was Meadows. Meadows. Uh, yeah. Okay, Meadows. Meadows, yeah. I still remember, like, uh, there, I was also in school. And it's, I'm sorry to say this, my dad didn't have the... We were investing a lot in India real estate, Indian real estate. And when we were offered this, we were also like in this desert, who will buy 400,000? Why should 400,000, 400,000, four bed villa in Meadows? I know a banker in those days that right. took out a mortgage of 4 million and bought 10 of those villas. <sighs> and until now, mashallah, she is still, she still has them. Right. Gets her rent from it. She's totally settled. Wow. I mean, she retired a long time ago. So anything that you'd like to uh, point out during that bullish market, like see, because um, any... I mean, there was a lot of skepticism. Okay. A lot. 
Okay. You know, like uh, end of the day, they were like, like you said, who's going to buy in the desert and so on and so on. Right. But um, as you can see, to what to where we have reached, where we have gone, Correct. where we have come now, and obviously there's a lot of people that goes. I mean, we have a proven track record. You know, this is a very important point because this was something that annoyed me a lot because see, I was born and raised here. <clears throat> I love Dubai. You know, I, now. where i come from see we have family all over the world my sister lives in australia my cousins live in canada we've got family in us but i love dubai I'm a, you know i've expressed this in most of my videos i love dubai and i'm very grateful to the government for allowing people like us to achieve our dreams you know like like imagine i mean most of us came from zero you know and today and this person for example i don't know where the banker was from where was the banker from whom bought these things india things? and today what that those 10 properties must be what 40 million <laughs> their yeah, asset value around this, right yes, right yes, absolutely right so, so that's see from from a banker who took a loan of 4 million she became a tycoon with this is like this is i don't know how many years ago at 40 million i don't know how much she must have expanded that further so um, how much is probably made in rental as well like so we have dubai has always been questioned okay especially after that 2009 crash I I remember because like for example before you were hosting the expo people are like oh the market will crash the market will crash you know there's always been questioned but I think now we've come out strong but before we get into that um so 2002 2004 okay we understood the spike to buy started real estate there was so much hype and people were buying 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 2009 the market crashed so then how do you think that we recovered from that crash I mean I think we've done extremely well from that time. True. Uh don't forget there was another one but we'll come to that later on. Okay. Over time let's say we we were on uh, recovery mode. Okay. It was going over time it was increasing. I mean 2010 came, 2011, 12, 13 things were going up steadily. Mhm. So I'd say we did come back to it. I think at around 2016 or 15, I believe. I think 2013 I had a great 2013 was a fantastic year for me. It was amazing. It was, but yeah, 2000 So this is a reason why we're getting into this is because there is speculation, okay, the market is climbing, there will be a correction. So we are trying to I want to the idea of this video is to understand when that correction would potentially occur and how can you safeguard yourself? from that correction so there is 2002 to 2004 2009 uh 2013 and towards a slight dip and again 2020 onwards has been a spike so we're trying to assess what well, how can investors safeguard themselves okay what are the what are the rules you see because i believe in trading real estate stocks crypto everything are fantastic products to make money real estate is probably one of those safer assets to invest the safest safest yes. safest because it's a tangible asset okay so 2009 of course we did a fantastic live it's funny i started my career in 2009 <laughs> mashallah look where you at now <laughs> actually in a funny way in 2009 see there was a market even then true because there were people who had confidence in the market and they picked up a lot of stock and they made a lot of money you know definitely so 2009 i was working with hampton zimar in the dubai marina office i don't know if you've been there you know in the dubai yes. next to stefanos yeah. you know there was a beautiful yeah. office there mm. and every day there were clients walking in and so for me i was a fresher graduate no you won't believe now a lot of people don't know this but imagine a fresher graduate okay i was like what 21 years old i was making 30 40 grand a month and for most Imar agents, that was a bad value because they were Correct. so used to making like hundred, hundred, eighty. I do know right, and so for them, see for me the whole month's earnings was thirty four, like you know rentals, sales, you know like all of that, you know. But uh, for them, one deal was a hundred grand, so that is why there were not many people interested. For, but for me, it was like I'm like, what's wrong with people, man? <laughs> you know. And so uh, it was very interesting. 2000 so now 2013 to 2016 dubai saw a spike any thoughts on that why we spiked? i mean i think it was because um, i think there was a lot more areas that came out at that time okay i think there were more developments more development companies that came out at that time a lot of a lot yes. like yes. and also i think because 
I mean, at that time, in 2009, JVC was not even there. Correct, correct. In that time, it was. Oh, there. true. That's a good point. That's JVC a very good was point. Yes, yes. Obviously, yes. over time, I think 2013, no, yeah. not 2013, maybe 15 or 14. Yeah. That's when JVC was introduced. Yes, yes, yes. So obviously, like you said, when you said New there was Eris. a spike, yeah. a lot more areas came out. JVT came out. JVC correct. came out. Correct. Dubai land, no, Dubai land was there from before, but there were so many others. Like Falcon City and all that came no, out. No, Falcon City was there from a long time. From a long, long time. Yeah, it mm. was there for like, I do remember it in 2009, it, it's 2008, I think it was. J- JVC, Sports City, Sports JVT. City was there as well. JVT, JVC, I mean, there were just plots of Jumeirah land. Park. Jumeirah Park is also an old one. Mm. Jumeirah Park is also an old one. But yeah, I think that a lot more areas came out. That's why you saw. Actually, there was also um, in 2013, you guys introduced um, escrow accounts. Oh, yes. So there was that so made it 10 times even more safer safe, for, the, safe. for the investor to be yes. like, OK, fine. Now I know. I think there was a cleansing that happened then, you know, Correct. like all the in 2009 crisis. There was a cleansing, like all the let's say there were a lot of people who had no intention to hand over. Correct. They all left the country. You know, there's so yes. many. De- that time we had a phase where so many developers were running away. Yes, a lot of developers. Right? So obviously, to become a developer now, the rules are a lot harder. A lot harder. And uh, yeah. when you actually st- want to start developing, right, court comes into it. Correct. The U- Dubai government comes into it, where they set up an escrow account that's handled by Dubai Court itself. Right. And uh, I mean, obviously, we've put in a lot of safety measures. You know, Correct. To Correct. safeguard their investment. Then there was again, I think between 2016 and 2020. See, every time I saw that when the market was trying to reach a certain point, the speculators came in and they were like, oh no, because the expo is coming, the market's going to crash. True. Every country who has hosted an expo has, has had a recession. Because they invested so much into the infrastructure Correct. that they got into a certain amount of debt. And then the market slowed down. I after. think we're the only country that actually did well after it. Actually, yeah, we're actually <laughs> yes. the only country that yes. did well. Yes. I yes. mean, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, unexpected, but yeah. still, it was amazing.